my favorite trainings I have ever been to. And so the fact that I'm standing up here right now is blowing my mind. Um, I work full time, so you can probably see by this. Um, I have two little kids, uh, Stella's five and Gavin is four. And we have a super busy life and I do this on the side and I love it. So a side hustle. That's what we I'm right in the light. Um, that's what we kind of started calling it, the people who do this on the side with their full-time job. So a product or service that you may offer or sell in addition to a full-time job. And it may be your true passion. So for me, um, I've worked the last 11 years in IT. And I go to a cube and I sit there. And I am the wacky cubicle lady that they mentioned, the rise of the entrepreneur. I thought, seriously, did they talk to me about this before? Because they, they even mentioned a, mentioned a major student loan company, and yeah, that's where I work. So it's crazy. So who in here works full time and does this? Where are my side hustlers? So that's even more than I expected. And um, what's my typical day look like? So I work a nine to five job. So I get up. Early, I get Stella to kindergarten, I get Gavin to daycare, and then I actually live 30 minutes from the office. So my round trip commute is an hour. So I get to work way later than I should. And then I'm there for seven or eight hours because I have to get back over to pick Stella up by six and Gavin up by six. So I get back over there, I get the kids, we get home, we do dinner, you know, you do homework, you do whatever. And then kids go to bed at eight. I mean, I really have like, Less than, sorry, less than two hours with kids in the evening. And that's why I do this, so that's my why. And um, I have to find a time that works for me to do this. And so that time is in the evening, and that's when I'm tired. <laughs> that's when things are really hard, right? So that's what my day looks like. It may look completely different to you. Maybe you work night shift. Maybe you work something super early in the morning, okay? But it's hard. It's really hard, but it's so worth it. So why is this important to talk about? Because I feel like sometimes with all of this, with anything, you just, you never want to feel like you're going through something alone, right? You, you never want to feel like you're doing it alone. And there are so many leaders, there's so many down here who started out working full time and now they don't anymore. They, they do unique full time. And that is so inspiring, so inspiring. But sometimes I want to hear from people who are still doing it who are still doing it like I am. And so that's why I wanna talk about it. And that's why I created a little Facebook page where I can go on and talk about it every once in a while, just even if it makes me feel better. I just hope to goodness, you know, cause I know there are people out there who I can relate to. So let's see if this works again. Oh, good luck. Oh, I like this. I didn't choose the cube life, the cube life chose me. What's the page that you created? Oh, it's called Slayer Side Hustle. Business page. So, I post stuff on there, I go live, but then I'm like finding other presenters who work full time and featuring them on there. Oh, okay. So, um, I'd say for most of us, if you were to ask me any point in time, what's your biggest obstacle? Like, what's what holds you back? And I would say time. Always. It's time. Like, it wasn't that I couldn't figure out how to use iMovie or that I, you know, I, it's because I don't have enough time. I have a list over here of everything I need to do for home. I have a list here for everything I have to do for my full-time job. I have all the unique stuff. And what comes first? Like, what do I do? What do I spend my time on? And I truly believed for the longest amount of time, even for about the first year of doing unique, that I did not have any time. I had no time. I had all this stuff to do, but it wasn't going to work out. Like, And I stressed myself. And I don't know if you feel this way, too, but... When you have so much to do, and you feel like you have no time to do it, it can be paralyzing, right? You decide not to do much of anything because you are so overwhelmed. And I hate that word. I hate it when, when people are like, I'm overwhelmed and I'm discouraged. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I get it. I feel that way too. But you have to push through it. So there was a complete and utter disconnect between what I thought I could do. Because from the minute I started this, I didn't, well, I didn't think anybody would ever join me, ever. I just thought, I'm gonna sell some mascara. I'll make some extra money, it'll be fine. But then I got in and I realized, no, I can actually do this. And I believe I'm gonna be black status one day and I'm gonna like replace my income. Like I had these wild and crazy dreams. But there was this huge disconnect between 
how the heck was I going to get there? Because I didn't think I had any, any time to make this happen. So something happened for me. Um, I, I actually got to go to Unified twice. The first time I went in Chicago to a regional Unified, and that was great. And um, we talked about time blocking, and I was like, this is it. This is when I'm going to figure it out. This is when everything's going to make sense, and I'm going to know how to get this done. And all I did was <laughs> realize my entire day was booked, and I had no time to work on Unique, and I was still overwhelmed and having a pity party. Like, literally, I spent probably a year just having a pity party for myself, but at the time, I didn't have. <laughs> and then, the second time I went to Unified, because I was lucky enough that I got to go out to um, Utah for Unified, and I got to listen to Melanie speak. And if you've ever listened to Melanie speak, you know that she just talks about how important, you know, spending the time with your family is and like balancing everything and she's amazing. And she said, you don't have to work this business 24 seven to make it to black status. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then I like really that drilled into my head and something clicked, something clicked. I realized that if I wanted to do this, if you want to do this, you have to find the time. You have to look at your schedule, you have to find the time and make it work. You've already decided you're not gonna quit, you're gonna do it, so you have to make it work. And mentally, <laughs> ever since this moment, I felt better. <coughs> Come on now. Ooh. Okay, so we've heard a lot about mindset already, okay? Um, Morgan talked about overcoming your fears, Melina talked about all kinds about mindset, Kylie mentioned it, like, and that's where I'm starting too. I know some of you may be thinking, no, just give me like the goods. Like give me, how do I really do this? Like what are the tasks? Like how do I lay everything out? How do I get it done? But you have to start with some mindset stuff. And that, the first thing for me was accepting the time that I have. And that is what's so important. So you need to look at your schedule and be like ridiculous honest with yourself. Like I had to get to a point where I became so self-aware where I could look at it and go, Okay, I already know I want to do this. My time is after the kids go to bed. So what's your time look like? Your time may not be from eight till whenever in the evening. You know, I mean, I stay up till three in the morning sometimes and I have to get up at six. I mean, you just do it because I know that's what I want. So find the time, figure out what time is yours, what works for you, and maybe the morning. I don't know, you may only have 15 minutes a day, but figure it out, accept it, that's what you have. So that's what you have to work with. Um, so being very honest with yourself, you have 24 hours in a day. And Melina talked about sacrifice, okay? I mean, I'm there. I have some TV shows I like. I'm not caught up on This Is Us. I'm behind Aww. on so many shows on the DVR, right? Like, that's just how it works. You have to sacrifice. I choose to sacrifice sleep a lot. A lot, I just don't, I'm tired. Guess what, I'm gonna be tired for a while, that's fine. Someday it's gonna be very, very worth it. Um, Derek's story. So, Derek, if you've heard Derek's story before, I'm not gonna like tell Derek's whole story or anything, but on the cruise, he talked about when he uh, was a programmer, and so that's how I started as a programmer. I'm a systems analyst now, and I started as a programmer, I sat in the cube, and I've got the headphones on, and I do the whole thing, and he said that he had the idea for his company, but he just told himself over and over again, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to do that, you know, I'm not, so he didn't start working on it. And then he finally decided, he was gonna do it. He was gonna launch his company. And so he got up one hour earlier every single day. One hour earlier. Now that's not me, I'm not an early morning person, so I will not be doing that. But he did it. And guess what, it took as long as it took, but he did it. it and he got it done, thank goodness for all of us. I mean, but really, it was, you have to do that. You have to make that decision. And now I get a quick drink of water because my mouth has turned into the Sahara. <laughs> The podium, it does it to you. <laughs> okay, much better. Okay, so uh, I have to give my husband credit for work life integration because I never liked work life balance. I never liked that. It's just like, I don't, I don't know, it's just not happening. And he said work life integration. He's like, all this is constantly happening all at the same time. Every day you're just 
The way you work this is fitting it into the nooks and crannies of your life. It's really integrating everything together, understanding it's just like this web of stuff. And you have to make it work. So stop trying to get it all in balance. It's not gonna balance, like it, it's just not. And people ask me all the time, or they're like, I don't know how you do it all. Like, how do you manage to do it all? How do you go to, how do you do this? And I'm like, I don't, I don't. I literally don't. Have you seen my house? It's a mess. Have you seen my closet? Like, my husband asked me before I left to come here, like, when are you gonna wash clothes again? Because I don't really have any clothes. <laughs> I'm out, so I figured it out. Um, and he's really great, actually. So it's not gonna be a balance. Stop beating yourself up. It's not productive at all. Like I spent a good year just beating myself up for the time I didn't have, and it did not help a darn thing. I'm here to tell you that. It's not productive in the slightest. The action is what's productive. Beating yourself up just makes you feel like crap over and over again. Stop saying you don't have enough time. Just stop. Like whenever anybody gives me that excuse, I, it's like, oh, hmm. <laughs> just give me a minute, because I'm gonna have to come down and I'm gonna come right back at you. Because no, and so now, now I try to set, stop saying I don't have enough time because it's all a matter of priority, right? You have all this list of things you want to do that you think you should do that you, you know, you have this list, and it's just what's going to pop up to the top in that 24 hours in your day. That's what it's about, because you you have enough time. You have enough time for whatever you want to spend it on. Just know that, realize that. Like you have to be so self-aware when you have this much time to work on your business during the day, you have to really realize. Um, this last one I think is important because we talked a little bit, the other ladies talked a little bit about guilt. And we carry around so much guilt. Like as moms, as business owners, as friends, we have more guilt than anyone ever needs, okay? So guilt for your business, and here's, here's my example for this. Um, you're at work, and like for me, like sometimes I'll like, run away to the bathroom and try to post in my parties in five minutes and then I'll, you know, whatever it is, you glance at your phone and you realize, oh my gosh, everybody's out there working their business and I'm at work. Uh, <sighs> Kara posted a task in the team page. I can't do that right now. I'm at work. What am I going to do? Like everything's going to fall apart. So just, no, just stop. And then sometimes you feel inclined to even like, okay, so Kara's post is out there in the team page and you start going, is everybody wondering why I haven't posted yet? Like, why I haven't done the task yet? Are they thinking I'm lazy? Do they think I just am above doing this task? And you feel the need to comment and be like, um, okay, I'm at work right now, I'm so sorry, but I promise I'll do this later. You don't need to do that. You don't, you don't have a boss. You know you're gonna do it later, do it later. Make sure you do it later. If you're that excited, stay excited. Just drop the guilt, really. You, you, I beat myself up so much. I know I'm going to just keep repeating that over and over again, but I did, and it didn't work. <laughs> so don't do it. Okay, uh, I want to set this clip up real quick. Have you guys heard of Gary Vee? This is a clean clip, I promise. <laughs> so <laughs> Gary Vee is super motivational. You should follow him. His full name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Don't ask me how to spell that. And um, this is just a quick clip on work-life balance. So it's a, what he calls the 60 second clip. So a woman calls in and asks a question and uh, he has 60 seconds to talk with her and explain. So this is like two minutes. I hope you can hear it. You guys can't hear it. I think I muted it when I was up there by accident. I don't know how to unmute it. Yeah. Where's the mouse? Amber. I don't know. There it is. Oh. There's a positive and negative. I'm hitting the positive, and it's just saying. Well, I think she's using the computer. Oh, okay. Do it. Okay, forget the sound. I'll just give you a quick overview. So 
you have to watch this. If you look, if you Google like Gary Vee work-life balance, this is what it's really like a five-minute video. It'll pop up, and you should watch it. I just caught it in my news feed one day, and I was like, oh, okay, that meant a lot. So basically, she said, how do you do it? How do you balance everything? What do you do? And he was like, I think I balance everything by not judging myself so harshly. I was like, oh, wow, okay, that, that doesn't, okay, wow. And so he said, really, it's not the reality of what it really looks like, it's how you're grading yourself. Like, I'm gonna guess that you're like me and the grading scale you're using on yourself is way too harsh. Like, your expectations are way too high. And you have to give yourself some grace. You have to. Because if everybody, and he goes on to say, if your kids are still being decent human beings, your husband and you are still okay, your business isn't falling apart, you're still employed at your full-time job, I think you're okay. I think you're okay. You know, you just have to keep the tabs on that. And um, your point of view is important, but remember those other people's point of view. But don't judge yourself so harshly. Don't judge yourself so harshly. Aha. Okay. So mindset is everything. So let me get my head out of this one. Grab over here. So this one over there, what I planned. Mm -hmm. Straight, beautiful, perfect line. This one, what actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure in my life right now, I'm like on this downturn of this one, but I'm getting ready to like come up, but I'm somewhere down here. And <laughs> that's because like since December, our dishwasher had a leak and my entire downstairs of my house is gutted. <clears throat> my car died, we had to have the starter replaced. Friday morning, the morning Carol was coming to pick me up from work after work, my husband's car died and had to jump it with mine that I had just gotten back. We all got strep this month, and then my, head and my son got walking pneumonia. I mean, so <laughs> you <laughs> have to realize this is what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And um, everything you do each day is a step in the right direction. No matter how much time you have each day, you're planting the seeds. So that's my view. That's my view every day. Even if I only have 15 minutes one day, even if you only have 15 minutes to put in towards your business, I'm planting seeds. I feel like I'm just walking around with a basket. I'm just like tossing them up in the air, like giving them out everywhere. I know I'm planting seeds. Even if I don't feel like I really did anything that was super great for the day, as long as I took the time and I sent some messages, like I posted on my team page, whatever I did, that was a positive step in the right direction. Even if it was only 15 minutes out of my day, I promise you it counts. So life is up and down and expect roadblocks and obstacles. The more you can really realize that, the better off you're gonna be. Because I feel like early on I realized that life goes like this. Like it's a ridiculous roller coaster constantly, constantly. It does not go like this, it doesn't go like, it's like a freaking roller coaster. And so is your business, so is your business. And so I don't get surprised anymore when all of a sudden I have no oh. slideshow <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> so I don't even get like I don't even get worked up. Like some people on obstacle shows up and they're like, this guy is falling. I don't know what to do, you know, and they freak out. And it's like I expect obstacles and roadblocks constantly. So when they show up, it's like I've been waiting and I'm ready for you. Hello. <laughs> and, <laughs> It's not a big deal. You just, you know, like I know where I want to be is over there, like way over there. So I have to get around whatever it is. That has to be your attitude, whether you go under it, through it, over it. I don't care how you figure it out. You know, you have to do what it takes to get over there. And the key is, it sounds so oversimplified, but they all talked about it. You keep moving and you don't quit. I do not care if this is your pace. Like li literally, I do not care if this is your pace. It counts. You don't stop. And I've lost the clicker. Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> you look like it. Okay. So I wanted to just share um, some of the things. Did I skip that? Hold on. That was kind of funny. I'm not sure I didn't skip that. I think we have him taken care of. Excuse me, I'm busy. Yeah. Okay, no, that's right. Okay, so what have I found works for me? What problems have I solved for myself? These may not be any of your problems, I don't know, but these are some of the things that have worked for me. So, online parties, that's what works for me. Working from my cell phone in the nooks and crannies of my life, that's what works for me. Um, 
And you know, some people, I'll hear people say like, you know, don't, don't wait to start an online party. Like just start it, you don't need a script, just go. And I get that to an extent, but for me, if I'm at work and I'm literally posting on my lunch break or I'm trying to post in the morning before I go to work, I have to have some semblance of organization. I have to have something. So when I have 15 minutes, when I'm literally sitting on the toilet in the bathroom posting in my parties, um, <laughs> I don't have to think about what post comes next in my five to 15 parties I have open. I don't even have to think about it. And maybe my script is loose. Maybe it's not like an everyday thing, but I have some options at least to pick from somewhere. So get organized, and if you're not taking advantage of online parties, you need to hop on that train. Um, stay in selfie ready. If I show up to work, and all of a sudden it's lunchtime, and maybe something happens, I don't know, I, I wanna post about something on my lunch break, like, I can't decide halfway through the day to put makeup on. I can't do that. So I get up in the morning, and like, I don't care, some people at work may think she wears an awful lot of makeup to work. I do not care. <laughs> was it a day for a Super Bowl lip? It is if I want it to be. <laughs> and so I take pictures. I take pictures and I have selfies stockpiled in albums just in case something comes up and I want an original picture because I do not want to use a graphic. I want to be able to take two seconds, use a picture of me I've got sitting on my phone, hop on word swag, create something and put it out there. Or if a customer asks me uh, in the middle of a party and you know I'm in the bathroom again or in my car at lunch, hey, do you have a picture of somebody in Soul Tree? I do. Let me find it for you. Hold on. And it's me and my phone. Um, planning. I have to plan. I have to plan or all of a sudden, it's been two and a half weeks and I realize I haven't gone live on my personal wall. Or I haven't, you know, I haven't done anything. And it's like, wow, it feels like I just did that the other day. But what helps me, even because I'm not a planner, like I'm not a planner by nature. I bought a planner for this year and I think I've used it for like, two, I've used it for like two weeks in December because it came with like the December and yeah, it's not going well. But what I found really works for me, if you're not the planning type, I print off like a, the, um, just the month, like the uh, eight and a half by 11 picture of the month. And so in the blocks I can just put, okay, I'm going live on this day. I need to follow up on this day. I need to, you know, just the, the high overlying task so that you can look at it and go, okay, well it's Tuesday now and it said I was supposed to go live. So I already advertised it on Monday and it's a lot harder for you to not do it when you see it written down there you hold yourself more accountable when you've planned for it and you see it. It's hard for you to sit there and go, I'm gonna skip that live and I'm just gonna watch The Walking Dead instead. It's not as easy. Um, if I didn't have the alerts in my iPhone, I probably wouldn't remember to be here this morning. It's how I survive, <laughs> which is funny, like going back to the people saying, how do you do it all? Like, how do you make this work? It's like, I'm a freaking hot mess. If you know me, like my team's back there going, that's true, she's a really hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> Without the alerts in my calendar telling me, like in the evening, reminding me, hey, Sally Sue messaged you this afternoon and you said you'd get back to her, you need to message her because she wants to host a party. And my phone dings at me. You can put everything in that thing. And I do, literally my life is in the alerts in my calendar. Um, a ring light. So one of the biggest problems for me was, it's winter and in the evening I felt like, how am I supposed to do anything with my job? And again, I was in the pity party status of I don't have enough time. And then I was also having the pity party for I don't have a ring light. And my friend Christy was like, buy a ring light. And I'm like, they're a jillion million dollars, aren't they? And she's like, oh dear Lord, here's the link on Amazon, buy the ring light. And I'm like, okay. And then I looked, so I'm like, well, these aren't a jillion million dollars. Why didn't I try to solve this problem a lot earlier? And then I got it and it's totally changed my business because I solved my problem. That's all that was. That's all I want you to take away from that is if there's something that's like blocking you, figure it out. Don't have a pity party about it. It doesn't work. Um, Staying present on social media. Don't let them forget. Like I'm terrified that they'll, that everybody out there, my friends, my followers, that they may forget that I'm their makeup lady. So I'm just keeping them in tune on what's going on with my life. I'm posting about me. Um, I don't want to let that drop. I don't want to fall off the face of the earth because then I'll go somewhere else. So I don't want that. Facebook Live. Facebook Live has changed my business. And if you're not using it yet, hop on that train too, because. It's a time saver for me. That's the biggest aspect. I mean, I love that I can reach all kinds of people when I do it because it's public. And But I can, on a whim, on an evening after my kids go to bed, if there's something I want to talk about with my team or something I want to showcase to my followers and friends on Facebook, I can just click a button and do it. And it takes much less time than a pre-recorded video that I edit and feel the pressure to be perfect. Because here, they don't want to see perfect. Like, they want to see hot mess me get on there and just 
joke around and be myself while I'm putting on makeup. So it saves me so much time. Okay, so I just wanted to touch on leadership just quickly, and it goes back to a lot of stuff Kylie said too, and that's just leading by example. Like you're, you're not doing anything that you wouldn't ask your team to do, um, and your personal business is your number one. When anybody asks me, anybody on my team that works full time or they just have a lot going on and they are having a hard time balancing, they're like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, get some parties going. That's your number one. Like, work on your personal business. Keep it afloat. Don't let it, don't let it completely stop because it's like this ball of momentum. You know, and the minute you let it just sit there, it's so much harder to get it going again. So no matter what you do, don't let it drop. And when you do that, you're leading by example. Like, you're showing your team, here's what you should be doing. Here are the things you should be going through. Here's what, you know, I'm, here's me doing parties. Here's me posting on my personal wall. Here's me going live. That's the stuff you keep up with because even when you don't feel like you have the time to devote to leadership and talk to every single person on your team and maybe you have so much going on. You lead by example. And then, and I wanna tell you too, when I'm saying all this stuff, like this is stuff I constantly tell myself and have to remind myself. None of this stuff is like stuff that's easy for me that I just have down and that's why I'm telling you about it. Like this is a constant reminder for me. Um, empower your team and ask for help. If you're like me, you have a lot of really smart, really talented ladies on your team and you need to take advantage of them. Let them do a training on your team page. Let them post about something. Let them run something. Because all that does is empower them. And it shows their girls underneath them, like, wow, look at Sally Sue. Look what she's capable of. That's really awesome. It just empowers everyone. And so the last one is something that I, early on, I think I was really guilty of. I kept my personal business going, but I struggle to stay connected sometimes to my team or like, you know, just message or personally enrolled. Like I, I need you to know how important that is just to stay connected with them. Maybe you don't have time to like, you know, talk, chat all the time, but make sure you're sending them a message. You're just talking to them and stay connected. Okay, um, this is the last slide. I'm really happy about that. Um, with this clicker, that's only why. Um, so I want you to own your awesomeness. Okay, that's what I really want you to do is own your awesomeness. So I took the speech class in college for people who had so much anxiety about public speaking that we didn't have to give speeches. Like looking back, that was a terrible idea. It was a terrible idea. I should have forced myself to take a legit class. Um, but I've never done this before and this was terrifying to me. But what I did in the months leading up to this was completely reprogram my brain. Completely. Like, every time I felt nervous, I told myself that I was excited. Every time I thought I was going to throw up, it was like, it's because you're so excited. You can't wait. And so me getting up here today was me owning my awesomeness. So I could show my team and you all that you have to own your awesomeness. Like, you all have unique gifts and abilities, and you have to take advantage of them. And you have to stop worrying about what anybody else might think about you. You know, just do the things that you want to do and that you know that you should do and not hold back. Like, don't be afraid to be too much for somebody. Like, do it. Because you, you know what's on the other side is worth it. That's why. I know it's worth it. So, lastly, the last thing I want you to do, I want you to strive to be someone who instead of saying, why me? Why me? Like, when my house is falling apart and my car is dead, the slideshow won't work. You could be sitting here going, why me? Like, why does this crap? It's just crap on crap on crap. Why? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. All it means, like, on that little, uh, the graph with the little loop-de-loop -loop thing, it just means I'm down here at the bottom, <clears throat> and something, like, legit awesome is waiting for me. Yeah. Waiting for me. Because I've had crap after crap lately. Something so good is coming, and I'm so excited about that. So be someone who says, why not me? Why not me? Thank you. <laughs>